Welcome, welcome, welcome to the Step Up Podcast. I'm MK Sullivan. And I'm Danny Moreno. And this episode is brought to you by Never Second. Never Second is a system of fueling products formulated specifically for endurance athletes that provides a blueprint for success by allowing the athletes to test, optimize, and perfect their fueling and hydration during training. We take the guesswork out of performance fueling. And on today's episode, we have Malin Osa, who is a very promising young Spanish athlete currently representing Solomon International. She currently holds the third overall ranking in the Golden Trail World Series this year with two fourth places and a fifth place. Uh, This overall places her in a great position to potentially secure a podium spot after the final. With a strong background in soccer, Malin caught the attention at last year's Golden Trail World Series final in Madeira, where she consistently finished in the top five. And we are very excited to see where her career goes. Welcome, Malin. Hey. So how are you feeling after um, this U.S. trip that you just went on? You had great performances at Pikes Peak Ascent and Mammoth Trail Fest. And I know that the travel can be kind of insane in the middle. So tell us a little bit about that trip. Yeah, it was good. I mean, it was a long trip. It was my first time in the U.S. and I was feeling really ready for for these races, although they were uh, quite high and in the altitude. But yeah, the body answered well. I enjoyed a lot the places and and the races were were really good. So I, I was really happy. Yeah, I for some reason, when I was looking back at your results as to, you know, you have an incredible amount of points. For some reason, I thought you did way more races this year, but you were very strategic. You chose Dolomites and the two U.S. races, uh, which honestly, all of them are at altitude. So I'm curious why you chose those three races. Yeah, I decided to to not do really long races this year because I think I'm still uh, a bit young. So I decided to to not go to to marathons. That's why I decided to avoid Segam and, and Mont Blanc. And then I know I'm quite good at technical, so I thought uh, Dolomites would be a really good distance and and a good race for me. And the same thing with Sears and I. I decided to stop in August. I tried to train as much as I could and to to reach the U.S. races in the best shape possible. And I think that worked because because I'm now in the third overall, as you said before. So so yeah, I'm I'm happy with the with the season I, I'm doing. And I'm actually going to back it up a little bit because I realize that like I don't know much, and also our listeners probably don't much know much about your background. So tell us a little bit about your sports background and like how you got into trail running to begin with. Yeah, I've been swimming and playing football all my life. And but well, I love mountains since I'm really young. My family love mountains and I have a small house in the Pyrenees as well. So I've been uh, going to the mountain my whole life. And it was a surprise because I ran my first uh, trail running race two years ago, uh, two summers ago, and I realized I was better than expected. So I loved the sport and I decided to continue until until now. Yeah, that's a, that's a pretty cool combo. Uh, I don't hear, I grew up playing soccer as well football and the rest of the world um and Mm -hmm. a lot of my friends who played soccer like they mostly did like outdoor sports and swimming obviously is outdoor too but I think that's a really cool combo that you have you know kind of like that full body exercise being in the pool and stuff um I'm sure that helped a lot with your your back and your upper body strength uh but also pairing that with soccer did you ever enjoy one more than the other or like, why did you choose those two sports? Um, swimming, it's really typical in my town. Like, when we are young, everyone, everyone goes there. And I started swimming because of that. And it was cool. I like, I think I like suffering in the sport. And, and swimming is a really hard sport. You need to train a lot of hours. And I think that helps me a lot right now as well. Because I, like, I have a background with a really suffering sport. And on the other hand, I loved football my whole life. I was a fan from a lot of football players, and I I lived really in a really intense 
a period of my life with with football so that's why I I chose them and I've been doing them like um, until two years ago something like that until I started to to run in the mountains. I was a, a swimmer growing up also and I bet that's part of why you like have done so well at these altitude races because I remember when I moved to altitude for college I was like this actually isn't that bad I'm just used to like not breathing underwater so, like what's the difference? <laughs> yeah. Um, I think I'm dealing pretty, pretty good with the attitude and I don't know exactly the reason, <laughs> but, but I think it's a, it's a good point because, because I will do more races in altitude maybe in the future. So, so I'm, I'm happy with that as well. <laughs> yeah. I love that you say a suffering sport. Cause I feel that <laughs> that is trail and mountain running. You're just suffering a majority of the time. And then I also love how you said, uh, like the intensity, like you enjoyed the intensity of football. So intensity meets suffering. Uh, I could see why you are paired and prepared well <laughs> for trail running. <laughs> um, going back to kind of like your selection of the races and also, you know, taking August to train, um, for me, that is just like, so I love hearing that. I love hearing that approach, especially for younger athletes, kind of recognizing, you know, maybe look, thinking more long-term. And I'm just curious, is that something that you thought of, or like you are talking to a coach about, um, yeah. How did you formulate that plan? Cause I think that was extremely smart. Yeah. Um, my coach is really conservative and he's always stopping me, can I say, um, but this decision was about me and I mean I want to be I want to be my best I want to be the best trail running I can be like in a 10 years uh, period so I, I think it's there's no point on starting to race longer races or to do the best races right now because I'm just 20 years old and I think I can have a really long um a lot of years of trail running so that's why i think it was a smart decision to to stop um in shorter races as well as i think it's now the time you have that punch for those um shorter races and and i think i need to to use that potential i have in shorter races now and um, year by year go like increasing the distance or maybe uh, doing uh, some marathons but but with taking the time. Very mature. I love it. <laughs> Most 20 year olds are like, I got to race as much as I can. At least I think if I had started trail running at 20, I probably would have been that way. <laughs> but um, <laughs> so tell us a little bit about Dolomites. Cause I feel like that was like, I mean, you had a great series of races at the, um, the final last year, but Dolomites was mm -hmm. like a big race for you. And, uh, kind of kicked off like everybody knowing who Malinosa is. Uh, tell us about the race. Yeah, after the Worlds, I had a really tough time because it was difficult to recover. I was a bit tired mentally as well. And I approached the Dolomites race a bit scared. I knew the race was really good for me. And, but well, a couple of weeks before, I started to feel ready again and and the race especially the uphill was the best i could have done honestly i think it wasn't my best race because i'm not happy with the downhill i did but but yeah um in general it was a really really good day uh, i didn't expect to to have that result uh, with the best in the world having a fourth place it was it was a dream for me and and i really enjoyed enjoyed the moment Oh, Danny's a little paused right now, so I'll ask the next question. But <laughs> um, so then, so then you go to America, and you have some awesome races. So I'm curious because the final last year was a stage race, and that was kind of I'm assuming like definitely the longest you've ever run in one go. Yeah. Sure. So, <laughs> like, did you enjoy that format, or are you more excited about the the shorter distance coming up? Uh, I uh, I think the final was a surprise for everyone, but especially for me, because my first objective when I 
go, go, when I went to Madeira was to finish the stages because I didn't even know if I would uh, be able to finish them all. Uh, but also I realized, and I'm realizing while training as well, that I think I can be good at longer distances because I'm more diesel than fast. <laughs> but uh, that's not the reason to start doing long races now. Uh, I'm motivated for the future because I think I can be good in marathon, but um, I, st I still have a lot of time for that. And that's why I'm enjoying now the shorter races. And then like, I'm really motivated as well to, to do longer ones in the future. So going into the final, do you have um, like a specific strategy with the time trial day and the, um, the 26K day? Are you doing both? Yeah, I will do both. And I think the time trial is too short for me because <laughs> I'm not as fast as others maybe. But yeah, I will do both and try to get uh, as much points as possible in both of them. Yeah, you're currently ranked third, which I feel like is amazing. First off, congrats to that. Um, but yeah, like the difference between third, fourth, fifth, and sixth is, and even seventh is not that big. So no. <laughs> if, you, if you're willing to share, like what is kind of like your race plan going into the longer day to kind of protect that? I have, spot? Well, first of all, I need to tell that um, I think it's really difficult to maintain that third position because I know I'm there because I deserve that. And I have done really good races. But as you said, uh, the gap is really close between the third and the seventh and I know I need to do my best race for maintaining that that's why I think I will be really really happy with that top five maybe because in the in the beginning of the season my goal was to finish like in that dream it was to finish top 10 so yeah and right now I'm like really really excited and I still I'm still assuming that I'm third, third overall so, well, the strategy is to do my own race because that uh, worked out as well as in Mammoth and also in Pice Peak. So I will go and do my race. If I have a good day, I can be fighting for that top three. And if not, well, uh, I'll do the best as I can. And, and that's all. I'm excited to watch. I think it's going to be <laughs> like one of the more exciting finals just because it is one day and everybody is so close on the men's yeah. and the women's side after that like um second place spot and um oh, i had a question about the course specifics because the course is like super runnable it looks like there's not um many like long climbs or long descents that you can kind of just like you know let go so you kind of have to be hammering the whole time and uh i think that I'm just I'm curious are you more of like a go out slow and build into it or do you go out hard in races I am I think the climbs are too short for me because I think I'm better in long climbs like in Mammoth my best uh, time was when the climb got uh, steep but well I've heard as well that a couple of downhills are quite technical, so my goal is to to push hard in those downhills to to make the biggest gap I can, and and then I think it's really important to not go not to go too hard in this race because you have an uphill really in the end as well, so you need to to reach with energy that that was um, that place, and and I will try to to reach the the final the final kilometers with with uh, enough energy. Out of curiosity, have you ran on, like, in this area before? Where the final is at? No, I haven't. No, I don't know the the place. Uh, well, the good news is that we are at zero meters. <laughs> so now we are coming back for, for the altitude. So in theory, it will be easier, but, but well, We'll see because everyone is in the same position now as well and the, the field will be really, really strong. 
So my plan is to to enjoy and to do the best I say the best I can, but but without uh, focusing too much in that third third overall. And are you planning on getting there early enough to kind of see the course, or when do you fly in? I'm flying two days before, so no, I think I'm not <laughs> I'm not running <laughs> the whole course. <laughs> uh i've i've seen the the profile and i've i will i will make a plan with my coach but but i'm not uh, getting crazy with with thing uh, actually sometimes i prefer not to know the course and to be a surprise so mammoth was like that and it was good so. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny i think uh, sophia lockley does the same thing she doesn't really check out the courses beforehand um so it seems to be working out for both of you too um i, I don't know if that's the only reason for sophia but <laughs> <laughs> that's incredible. are you doing any kind of last minute training efforts that are geared specifically towards the course and kind of the the short punchiness of the hills yeah um the one time I'm, i will do a test that i have been doing the whole season to see where is my ship right now? And then yeah, I'm I'm trying to find trails with uh, shorter climbs and faster faster paths. And well, let's see if that works. A little bit of race simulation. Do you do like a when you say a test? Are you doing like a time trial? No, it's it's more to to see the lactate and okay. uh, like there is like a, a test with the same loop, doing it more than once. It's like seven minutes loop, approx. And then you like test your lactate and then like each loop? Yeah. That's yeah. cool. Mm -hmm. So I guess last question would be, uh, what shoes are you planning on wearing for the race? The shoes? Uh, okay, <laughs> I'm not sure I can say this, but I think Salomon is planning to, to um, have uh, different new shoes that will be in the um, in the shops next year, and we'll will run with them. And in the final, uh, obviously, I will try them two days before because I'm not getting them <laughs> earlier. <laughs> and if I see <laughs> if I see they are not my thing, I will run with the with the ones I run always. Are the pulsar pulsar soft run or pulsar two? Cool. Well, that's yeah. exciting. Shoes is all exciting, uh, not only for the athletes, but all the fans as well. So personally, yeah. I, I'm curious to see what those look like if you end up choosing them. <laughs> I'm sure one of the Sullivan athletes will end up running with them. So that's really exciting. Yeah. That's awesome. Well, Malin, we are so excited to watch you, uh, especially just I really respect your approach at the young age that you are, 20 years old, folks, and already top three in the series. And yeah, it's just going to be really exciting to see you fight for that podium. Thanks. Thanks for inviting me as well. It was, it has been a pleasure for me. Of course. This has been the Sub Pub Podcast brought to you by Free Trail. Just a reminder for you guys that this episode is brought to you by Never Second. Check out the show notes for a link to their website, their Instagram page, and use code SUBHUB25 at checkout to get 25% off of your purchase. 